Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today on our session on Excel. I'm Amanda Pritchard. I'm the Microsoft 365 Specialist at UT Dallas. And I just want to go over a couple of things in Teams Live in case this is your first time joining us here. We do have chat uh, enabled. It's on the right side bar of your screen. So if you want to engage with us, ask any questions, if you need clarification on anything that we're demoing today, please feel free to drop a line in that chat. It is moderated, so we look at it, review it, and then we'll get back with a response to you. We do also have closed captioning available. If you'd like to enable that, it's at the bottom right corner of your screen and you can turn it on there. So uh, we're going to be posting a few links in the chat. I think we've already got our welcome message out there. If you see that, hover over that welcome message and give it a thumbs up. That's just going to let us know that you're able to find the chat and engage with us because we want to make sure that you're able to have a voice in today's session. Your camera and your mic are automatically muted, so feel free to enjoy your snack um, and kind of just know that you have that, that quiet time and um, we won't be able to see or hear anything that you're doing. In addition, a really great feature in the live event, if you've never used it before, if you hover over your screen now as an attendee, you have the ability to hover over your screen, you'll see a little line. You can pause or rewind any part of the session while you're watching it live. So if there's something that our speaker is talking to you about that you want to refresh her on, you can always jump back in time and go over it again. Okay, before we get started, I see we've got um, people that are still joining. So I wanted to go over a couple of upcoming events that are happening in the Office of Information Technology. Uh, the big one that's happening this week in two days. I know the Technology Bar is officially having its grand opening. Um, if you have already visited the Technology Bar, why don't you throw a comment in the chat? I would love to see those that have already been there and get an idea of who's already made their way to the student union to visit us at the bar. This is a location on campus and the lower level of the student union. And it is designed to have tech support on tap for anyone that needs it. So whether you're looking at getting better uh, security on your system, if you need help with a uh, duo or VPN, whatever the case may be, you can walk up and get that assistance. We're gonna put the link in the chat uh, so that you can if you would like to join, you'll be able to join the live stream of the ribbon cutting. It's gonna be virtual in the morning. So you're able to just join and get a preview of what the space looks like and listen to some of our uh, keynote speakers that morning. Then in the afternoon is the in-person activities. If you would like to come out and join me at the bar, uh, I'll be there from 12 to five in the afternoon. We have a full agenda of different campus groups. Um, um, we've got eSports, the Chess Club, Multicultural Center, um, Career Center. So just some amazing groups that are going to be utilizing our space to talk a little bit about how they use technology to better support students and campus. So we wanted to invite you. It's an all day event. You can. Um, either join virtually or come in the afternoon, but we want to show off this space and show how you're able to leverage it as faculty or staff or student. It is open to everyone. So we've got those links posted in the uh, chat. If you'd like to stop by, we would welcome you there. I'm checking the chat really quick too to see if anybody has mentioned if they've already visited us. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing very many. So. Um, It'll be a great opportunity if you want to join us on Thursday uh, to be able to see our new space in action. So, okay. The next thing I just wanted to call your attention to, we have a very active Instagram account. And there right now, this very moment, we have a giveaway going on. So if you would like to participate in a giveaway, we're going to pull a winner at the end of today's session. I've got the QR code there on the screen. So if you want to pull up your phone, you just hover over your camera. You can hover over that QR code and it's going to direct you to our Instagram account. If you already follow, uh, you'll see there's a picture here where we're tagging people that have helped us excel. 
whatever that is for you, however somebody has helped to support you to excel in what you're doing and to excel in supporting campus, go ahead and tag them in that post. It counts as an entry. It's just a way to give somebody some recognition of how they help support you. Um, and then we're going to do a drawing at the end of today's session for uh, whoever wins, uh, wins that. It'll just be a random winner. So we also have the link in our chat. You're able to pull it up there if you're not able to access that QR code. Okay, well, great. Well, hopefully we'll get lots of uh, participation there. Uh, I'm going to leave that up for just a second. I know that we're all here uh, for one reason, and that is to enhance our ability in using Excel, uh, whether it's your, your use of formulas, however you like to do that, that data analytics, your spreadsheets. We have an Excel, and you know I had to, presenter with us today from Microsoft who is going to show you how you can accelerate your use of Microsoft Excel. So uh, without further ado, I want you all to please give a warm welcome. Uh, Neil, I'll stop sharing so that you can start pulling up your uh, demo information here. Um, and I'll get your screen shared as well. But Neil is here to present with us. So whether you're a uh, uh, if you're just a beginner user, if you've used Excel some, but still could use a little assistance, Neil's going to take it away and uh, help make sure that we all know how to properly use this technology. And Neil, if you're talking, you are still muted, sir. I'm not muted anymore. Hello. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to it, I was I was trying I was trying so hard to beat you to it. I'm like, I know she's gonna tell me about you. <laughs> All right. Uh, hi. Good afternoon. Um, hello, UT Dallas. On this overcasty day here in Dallas, uh, my name is Neil, and I will be your instructor uh, here for our Microsoft Excel Basics training. Um, and even though uh, I will, it'll take me a while to uh, forgive Amanda for those very bad puns regarding Microsoft Excel, I will be very happy to present to you and show you how to utilize the application itself as part of the Microsoft 365 suite. So um, just to confirm, once again, you guys are able to see my screen, am I correct? I can see it, yes, perfect. Ex excellent, all right, great. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about what we're going to get into today. First of all, as we stated earlier, Teams live event, that's what we're in right now. So you have that ability to ask us any questions. Also, since this is a live event, you're able to rewind as well. So if you need to go backwards in time, say you missed something or something of that nature, no need to explain it again. You could just go backwards in time. So there's these playback, uh, these playback options down here. Now these you'll see right beneath the screen. So right past where my mouse cannot go. So uh, you'll find the options for playing and pausing the event as well as rewinding using the little, uh, the little meter that goes across. Um, then uh, at the same time, you also have the option for closed captions if necessary. If you need to turn on those closed captions, definitely be my guest if they help you out. That's an icon that looks like this. It should be found in the, in the right side of the screen. Then you should also be able to find an icon that looks like a little cogwheel that'll give you your settings for those subtitles actually. So things like, for instance, changing the size and the color of those subtitles. Furthermore, you're able to change your video quality there as well as playback speed. So if you need to slow me down, then we can do that right there via this option. Like I said, uh, that, that live event Q&A should be on the right side there. If it's not, go ahead and select the two overlapping chat bubbles with a question mark icon up in the top right hand area of the screen, and that shall allow you to then open it if you don't already see it. Please go ahead and ask any questions that you may have regarding that particular, uh, this particular content. All right. Let's go ahead and get a little bit more into it. Like I said, Excel Basics, level 100. We do a level 100 and a 200. This is gonna be the level 100. So it's all the basics of Excel. So 
first and foremost, here's our agenda. The very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about basic navigation. So we're going to talk about how you get around the application, as well as the easiest way to find those particular functions, especially considering the fact that if you've used any of our Microsoft 365 applications, especially the traditional Office Suite, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, as well as OneNote, you'll find that there are a lot of tools and you might not always remember where they are. So because of that, we will go over navigation. Then we will talk about basic functionality of formatting the Excel workbook and worksheets. Then we will talk about using formulas. This, is gonna, this isn't going to be an advanced look at formulas. It's going to be a very basic look at them, but it's going to be talking about using formulas and functions and validation to work with your data. And then um, we're going to work with the print process. So I'll show you how to utilize that print process with Excel workbooks, considering the fact that worksheets can go on for a very, very, very long time uh, in, 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 in both directions, both horizontally and vertically. They can go on forever. So because of that, uh, you want to be able to uh, you want to be able to make sure that you're printing off what you want to print off when you are printing a document. So we'll be talking about that. All right, so the basics of navigation, that's the first thing that we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about those uh, those navigation ribbons, uh, various tools that we have available. And then once again, formatting Excel, we're gonna talk about things like not only how to format the different uh, cells that you're working inside of, inside of a workbook, um, but also how to create charts as part of that as well. So there's some very easy ways to work on charts, both uh, creating one from scratch, as well as even finding recommendations based on the kind of data that you're working with. Then we're going to talk about using formulas, functions, and data validation. So that's the next thing that we're going to cover, and that's going to be uh, how to do various uh, various things with that data that you actually already have entered into the different cells um, on your different worksheets. And then data validation allowing you to uh, decide to um, lock specific cells to specifically only um, being able to have certain kinds of data inside of them. That's also something that we'll be able to do with that data validation. And then after, after that, like I said, that print process is going to be the last thing that we cover so that you know um, that you're printing off exactly what you want to and none of what you don't want to from certain Excel workbooks. All right, very, very first thing that we should go over here, especially for those of us who are brand new to Excel, even if you're coming back to Excel, you gotta know your terminology. So let's go ahead and get started with that. The very first thing that we're gonna do is go over this quick sheet right here, just on some of those basic terms that you should know about when you're going through Excel. The very first one is the cell. If you've ever looked at an Excel worksheet before, you'll see that that worksheet has a whole bunch of boxes in it. It's just a whole grid of cells. It's just a whole, uh, it's, it's, it's just an entire grid of cells. That's what each and every one of those boxes is called a cell. Now, every one of those cells has a set of coordinates, so to speak. It uses two different axes. Uh, um, uses the columns and the rows going across. One is alphabetical, the other one is numeric. And utilizing a combination of the two gives you the exact location of a specific cell on the sheet. So that's your cell reference. So I'll give you an example. Uh, if I was to go ahead and say that um, I want this, the, the cell that's in column G and row number seven, then that would be G7. Think about it like playing chess. Uh, if you've ever seen those people who play chess and they, they can rattle off the names of all the different areas of the board, um, it's, it's just like that. Then you have your value axis. So there's two different kinds of axes. There's a value axis and a category axis. And these are for when you're creating things like tables or different kinds of information that you're trying to display and you're trying to really organize it and, and really explain it. A value axis is, uh, is an axis that displays value going from maybe least to greatest, usually numeric values. So if you're maybe creating some kind of table and you're trying to have like a least to greatest uh, numeric value going across or going down, that's a value axis. 
then there is a category axis and that is when you're creating an axis of differences of kind as opposed to differences of value so think like for instance I think if you are creating like a, like some kind of a table in Excel and really you're trying to show how much, uh, let's see, uh, maybe you want to see what your, uh, if you have a small business and you're trying to see how much you guys made in revenue um, from quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four, the fiscal, fiscal quarters of the year, um, then what you can do is create a category axis quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, and then for each of those displaying the proper information. So that's, uh, those are the two different kinds of uh, axes that you can create inside of uh, Excel. And then I mentioned this earlier, this is called data validation. Data validation is a system where you can decide to set rules for specific cells on the worksheet so that when people, especially this is especially very useful when you're working with multiple people on the same, uh, on the same document. Um, data validation allows you to set it up so that um, those specific cells can only have a certain kind of data inside of them. So you can decide maybe that a certain, uh, these cells over here can only have numeric values. Um, they can only have numeric values. They cannot have decimal points. Uh, they can only be positive numbers. These are different things that you can set. So that that uh, that way you're always getting um, the uh, valid data in certain areas, especially if you're using formulas in that particular uh, table. Speaking of formulas, uh, there's the function and the formula, and these two play a big part in what we can do in Excel. Now, a function, first of all, is uh, is essentially a pre-written, uh, it's a pre-written formula that takes a value or values and then performs an operation. Think about it like things like, for instance, some of the most basic functions are ones that we've learned in mathematics, you know, um, finding the sum of multiple numbers, finding the average of multiple numbers, with even more advanced functions going even further. Um, and those are ones that we won't be getting into today, but I will show you that there is an entire library's worth of them that you can definitely pull apart for yourself. Then there's the formula. And a formula is actually a sequence of values, cell references, names, functions, or operators. So this is actually, um, this is actually where you can create, you can create a formula so that you can find an answer to something. You can take multiple cells and then uh, and then take some take some cell references and then combine them with a couple of functions and then um, add some other kinds of information in there and then uh, find an answer and that will be what's on that cell that you're typing in that particular formula on. And then last but not least, there is an argument. And an argument is where you can set things up like certain um, you can you can decide like the values that a, a certain function uses. So, for instance, uh, you could decide whether or not uh, the type of argument is specific to the function. Uh, for instance, some particular kinds of arguments are maybe if there's a certain text that, re that reads in a certain way. Maybe if there's a particular term inside of that cell, like a like like you know four letter word, specific four letter word. If that if that word is inside that cell, then that's an argument that you can then use as part of a function. It's a it's it's a it's part of a formula even that you could use. All right, so now that we've gone over all of those key terms at the beginning here, I think it's now time for us to jump right into our demonstration environment. So we're in here inside of Microsoft Excel. And remember, as I go through this training, please go ahead and ask any questions in that Q&A. I do wanna make sure that they are answered. Speaking of which, are there any that we can answer right now before we really get started? No questions, Neil, there was just one comment um, from an individual that felt a, a little overwhelmed, I think, by some of the terminology. Um, and I know you were sharing that just to create that basic building block of what things are called and how to identify them. Uh, but there's no quiz, right? Nobody has to have pressure to memorize every term that you just shared. Absolutely, yeah, there's no quiz. Um, yes, I introduced those terms um, 
as part of that that slide at the beginning, but you'll see the context of those terms as we continue on and th then it'll start to make more sense here. So hopefully we'll be able to go from there. Um, hopefully always ask those questions if you like I said, if you uh, find that you're lost or that you need some extra help there, just ask a question uh, and we will we will be here for you. So let us begin. OK, so first of all, we're here inside of the main area and it looks like it just started raining in Dallas. So I guess um, that's that's hopefully we're not you're not picking that up on my side. But um, here we are in the main area. This is where you will first find yourself when you first open up Microsoft Excel. <clears throat> so. You'll see that we're in this home section. You'll find some options for some brand new things that we can open up, maybe a blank workbook, for instance, um, as well as maybe some recent documents that we might have opened uh, recently. So these are some uh, some examples of some other documents that we can bring into uh, into Excel, ones that we have might we might have worked on, ones that might have been shared with us, etc. Then there's an entire menu specifically for new documents. So if you're trying to create a brand new document, this is the area to do so. Uh, you will have your blank workbook option always at the very top, but you also have the option of templates, and that's what we have right here. Look at all these templates that we have. This isn't even all the templates. This is just a couple of them. If you were trying to do a specific thing with Excel, there's likely a template for it. For instance, let's go ahead and find a template for creating invoices. So these templates are coming directly from our, our database uh, in, in like on the Microsoft Cloud. So you will have access to all of these um, and you can use them. So if you're if you're, you know, for instance, running a business and you need a billing statement, you need uh, you need a service invoice, different things like this. This is a great place to start. And then from here, you can edit that invoice to add the information that you need. It's very much a template, so it's just uh, you just you just add in the information where you need to, and you're good to go. As you see, that was just one example of one kind of thing that we can find here. I'll just type in one more. Let's go ahead and type in schedule. Some people like to make a schedule or like an agenda utilizing Excel. That's another thing that you can use. And uh, and here you here you see right now we have a whole bunch of different examples of, of schedules, calendars, um, you know, even like things like for instance calorie amort amortization schedules. So for those people who are counting their calories, um, that that comes into play. Uh, shift calendars as well for if you're working, uh, you know, if, or if you're managing people at in in a workplace and you're trying to make sure that people know when they're supposed to work, etc. And also the last thing I want to point out from this section is that there are a bunch of different uh, options as part of this template system. There's a bunch of options of tutorials, so you'll find some tutorials inside of the template section right here. Very, very useful for getting started with particular areas of the application. And then if you go to the bottom, you will find your options for opening documents, both from on your local device as well as from cloud locations, both in OneDrive, your personal cloud storage, and on SharePoint sites. That includes the ones that you might be part of if you're part of a specific team in Microsoft Teams. If you're looking for files from a team, they're actually stored inside of a SharePoint site of the same name. So if, the, if you're part of a team that's called, you know, the Octopus Project, uh, then there will be uh, a site called the Octopus Project in here that you can then select, and then that will be where you'll find those files. All right. Neil, so before now, you go any further, I'm sorry to interrupt you. We had a great question, and I know you had Excel already pulled up. Can you show how to navigate to Excel from your desktop? Sure. It's just uh, if you have it installed on your computer, you can just go ahead and select it via the all apps section right here. So if you now this is Windows 11, but this has always been the way to, to use it. So you'll find the same functionality in Windows 10, uh, even you know going further back. So if I was to go and select the start menu, 
whether it's in the center here or on the left side. Um, you can go to all apps if you don't immediately see it. You can go to all apps, scroll down, and typically it's in the E section. And can I add on to that too for our for the UTD audience as well? If you need to navigate to office.com, uh, office.com is kind of the warehouse for us to have all of our um, Microsoft products in one storage location. So from there, you can see Neil's demoing his screen. It appears on the left. So you, for us, we do have to log in and authenticate with Duo, but any of the apps that you need for Microsoft, that is your one-stop shop for, for going and getting instant access to those. And you'll know that those are the latest most updated versions available. So we always encourage you to go uh, through the web if you're trying to access it and it ensures your documents are stored on the cloud so that you could access them anywhere, anytime. And then on top of that, if you look right here to the right, you'll find the option to install Office on your device as well. So as long as you're logged in with your credentials and you have a valid copy of Office, which or especially if you're using Microsoft 365 in the in the University of Texas system, then uh, you should be able to install Office directly on your device. Um, and these are the web versions. Remember, this is a short list, though. This isn't the entire list of all the applications. So if you go to the all apps here, you'll find all the applications. This this list sometimes changes based on which ones you've been using. So it's not the entire list, but you'll always find it here. All right, so let's go ahead and backtrack. We're gonna go back to Excel. All right, so we're here in Excel and we're gonna go ahead at this time and I'm actually gonna, instead of opening a blank workbook at this time, I'm actually gonna open up a specific one just so that we have some information on our document. Now I've created this particular uh, document right here, a fruit supply document, and it has a couple of different um, some some different effects to it that we will be really demonstrating as part of this training. So that's the reason why I wanted to bring it up. So first of all, uh, like I said, base navigation, you'll find your basic functions all across the top here. So all of your functionality of Microsoft Excel is found up here via the different tabs. And under each tab, you'll have different tools available to you. The first one is your home tab, which will have your basic text functionalities, things like that, your font, your alignment. Um, if you're familiar with word processing systems such as Microsoft Word, you might be familiar with your alignment, align left, align center, align right. However, this is Excel, so we can do things a little differently here. If I was to go down a little bit here and I was gonna open up a specific uh, say maybe like a specific cell and maybe if I was to resize it as you are able to do with Excel, you can resize these individual cells like so. Then what I can do is I can select the cell and maybe I want to place a word inside of this cell. Just like you see that there's words and numbers here. I want to place a word here. Uh, now I can just double click in the cell and type here but I also have the capability of just typing here as well. Whatever you're typing inside of the formula bar here will enter into whatever cell you currently have selected. So that's also another easy way to enter in that information. So maybe I just wanna type in the word octopus. It's kind of octopus kind of day to day. I guess I keep referring to octopi, uh, but here we go, we have octopus inside of this section right here, in this, inside of this particular cell. Now, if you're using alignment, you'll find that currently I am aligned to the bottom left-hand corner, but I wanted to point out that you can align yourself to the top, to the middle, or to the bottom, and then you also can align yourself to the left, the center, or the right. So if I wanted to, I can go dead center, right in the center of that particular uh, cell. Same thing with the bottom right or the top right. So it's all up to you the way that you want to have your octopus positioned or the word the word of your choosing. Then I also have the option to change orientation. Now this is really useful for different uh, display of information on different kinds of tables and such. Maybe you want to angle the word in certain ways, angle it clockwise or counterclockwise, clockwise, vertical text, 
up and down, uh, rotating the text as well. So there's a lot of different options that you have here. You also can change the uh, whether or not the words wrap around the area. And this all works with numerics just the same as words. And if you noticed when I first started working with this particular cell, I adjusted it uh, via the edges. So I was able to select it and then I was able to go to the uh, different axes. Once again, here's those axes again. You can get a visual representation of those axes and how we are able to then go in here and resize them if we need to. So you select a specific axis, uh, like right now I'm on that vertical axis which has the numerics, and then there is the horizontal axis that has the alphabetical indi uh, indication as well. And then because I'm in this specific cell, the address of the cell or what we call the cell reference is D25. And you'll know it when you have it selected because it'll show up there. So whichever cell you have selected, there's the cell reference. So that way you know the name of that cell. If you ever need to refer to that cell, as you'll find if you start using um, things like extra kinds of functions and formulas, um, you'll want to know the name of that cell, that cell reference, and that's the one that you use whenever you're trying to uh, refer to this specific cell. All right. Now, if we were to keep continuing on, I want to talk about some of the other kinds of things that you can bring into Excel. So we're working with our basic functionality here, being able to change that font. Um, I want to talk about how you can also format these cells in different ways. So for instance, maybe what I want to do is I want to have a list of, um, maybe I want to have a list of different numbers right here that I'm going to list going off. For, like each one of these is going to have a different number inside of it. But I want these numeric values to automatically be um, currency amounts. This is one of the ways in which you can format a cell. So unlike how these are just loose numbers the way they are, 6, 4, 9, 0, I'm actually going to make it so that these cells right here from E24 down to E28, these five cells, whenever you enter in a numeric value, it will automatically convert it to a currency. So I'm going to show you. The way you can do that is using these number tools. And there's plenty of them, not just currency. There's all kinds of them. So if I go to the top here and I select the drop down, you'll find that the currency options are right here, immediately available. There's plenty more than what you're seeing here too. If I go and I hit more accounting formats, then you'll see that there's all kinds of symbols for all different kinds of currency. You can decide how many decimal places as well. If you see here, there's this is the, the larger section of categories of different ways that you can format the cell for different purposes, various kinds of number formatting, um, as well as even if it's like something like, for instance, if you wanted to set a custom one, you can actually even create custom formats if you wanted to. But we have even things like time, date as well. So you can set that date and time and configure whichever one that you like specifically. If you want to select whichever particular date and time you want, you can go ahead and select that. But like I said, I'm using currency, so I'm going to go ahead and select currency. Um, and I, I think I'll use the, you know, the the dollars and cents. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just use the option right here. Hit OK. And let's go ahead and get down to it. All all of these different numbers here or all these different cells are currently using that numeric uh, functions or that, that numeric formatting. So if I go and I hit 10, it will automatically be $10. Same thing with if I hit five, five dollars. How about three fifty? Three dollars and fifty cents automatically because I formatted those cells that way. So they will automatically be those kind of uh, th those kind of numeric values. Now if I go and I just type uh, chocolate instead, it's not gonna have that. But if I type in a number,
then we have the uh, we have currency. So when you so whatever you set right here for whichever of the cells that you currently have selected, if I click and drag these cells uh, and and you set a certain kind of formatting for numbers inside of that cell, then that's what's going to happen. You'll also find something very interesting that happens by default, and you don't have to have it this way, but it is something that happens by default, and it's usually because of the way numerics often are entered in certain situations as these, and that is that um, alphabetic values, something like, for instance, maybe if I want to type, um, let's go ahead and type um, pound cake. they automatically, uh, um, alphabetical values automatically align left, whereas numeric values align right. So what's $5? So let's go ahead and say $5 watermelon. And this one actually, I, I had edited this one. If you remember, this is the one that I edited the values for. So that one, um, is, that one had aligned in the center, but yes, as if I wanted to, I can go ahead and create uh, different kinds of um, different kinds of values, and this is a very easy way to create something like a very quick table. Um, maybe you just want to kind of indicate some information here. This is exactly the way that you do so. Now, there's other kinds of formatting you can do as well. If you were to go into the section. Um, if I was to go into the section specifically about formatting, if I go in here and select format, then there's also different things that you can do. You can change your cell size, visibility, you can uh, organize your sheets, um, but then there's also cell styles. And cell styles allow you to change uh, that visual style of that particular cell. Um, you can decide to manually change the font and the, the color of the cell at the same time. Um, so, and you can create your own cell styles down here as well. So if you wanted to make the pound cake entry pink and white, then you can do that just like so. And I'll select it again and set it back to normal. So you can do this on an individual basis. And then you also have the capability of using something called conditional formatting. Now, this is usually something that we show inside of like level in level 200, but I love it so much. I'm going to I'm just going to show you very quickly right now. If you were to, for instance, take a look at these numeric values in this table that I created, um, and you see that these numeric values uh, are all all over the place. There's even a zero in here. There's two zeros. There's no lemons and there's no tomatoes. Um, I don't like tomatoes, so that's why there's zero. Um, but if you see here, there's a whole range of values here. What if I wanted to indicate very, very easily uh, for somebody who wants, who then looks at this table, what if I wanted to automatically indicate the number um, in a very easy way to communicate this information? Perhaps there's something that we can use called conditional formatting something where format is automatically applied based on a certain condition in this particular range of cells. Now I've selected this, this range of cells right here, and if I go and I select conditional formatting, and I scroll down here, you'll find one of my favorite ways to really show is color scales. So if I was to select color scales here, you'll see that there's a couple of different options. Now this is the one I like the most. Uh, having a color scale based on value. So the lower the number is, is it shows up as, as red. The higher the number is, it shows up as green. You can customize these two. Maybe you want, uh, maybe you want to have a, a, a setting for yourself. You want to customize that color. Go ahead and click more rules here and you'll be good to go. But personally, I think I'm happy with just, you know, the more fruit we have, the better. So. I'll make it so that green is more fruit and red is deficient fruit. So we, we don't have any lemons, for instance. So these are different ways in which you can format a cell 
and and even use conditional formatting based on whatever information is already in that cell. Select the entire thing, and then you can create formatting based on this on an entire range in relation to each other. Questions so far? How are we doing, Amanda? Hey Neil, we had a couple of great questions. Some of it I think you'll probably be covering in a little while. Um, one was a question uh, for sorting the fruit. Uh, for example, when you have the fruit right now, you've got it sorted in alpha order. Uh, just reminders of how to filter and sort without including that title. I think some people were struggling um, trying to do some of their spreadsheets and it was sorting the title as well. Oh, I see. Okay, so um, now this this is getting into tables usually is level 200, but I, mm -hmm. I can I absolutely can explain it. All right, so, so take a look at what we have here. So what I have here is a formatted table. That's what this is. It's actually a formatted table. I'm going to actually undo the conditional formatting I've done. And I'm actually going to actually convert this back to the way it was before I turned it into a table just so I can show you what it actually is. So I'll convert it back to a range. And a range is just a range is just loose data. It has no relation to each other. None of this, as far as Excel is concerned, right now, after I've converted this back to a range, it's back to being just as significant as this information. It's not actually related to each other. It's just it's just information inside of cells. That's it. Um, and also, let me go ahead and I'll even make the cells look back like as if they were as if they never had any sort of table creation. Now, I entered in this information like this, OK, um, with the with the um, the headers that I wanted right here, uh, fruit indicating what kind of fruit and amount indicating the amount of fruit that I have, OK? Now, if I've done this and I wanted to create headers, what you want to do is when you go to create a table, which which you create a table by, and this is my way of doing it, I select the range that I want to be a table, and then I go up to here and I say format as table. And then from here, then I will select the style I want that table to be in. I like this one. Let's go with the green this time. Now the important thing before I select uh, the table itself, or before I, I select OK, it already has the range because I selected it beforehand, so it already knows that it's from D6 to E19 right here, so diagonally. But the important thing is if your table has headers, then you select my table has headers and make sure that you have them included, but make sure you select my table has headers. Hit OK. And then it knows that this is the header. It's not part of the it's not part of the data. Then from there you're able to do things like sorting A to Z. Sort Z to A. Sort smallest to largest. So this is the way that you're able to adjust that. <clears throat> and this is how you can make sure that your headers are not part of the data. Hope that explains. Fantastic. And it, that was perfect. And in doing that, you just answered one of the other questions. And then we've had a few coming in the chat. I'm just answering those directly. So that was that was wonderful. I am a little concerned that there's so many mangoes as somebody who is personally allergic to mango. Neil, what are you yeah. trying to do to me? See, I'm not allergic to mangoes. You can eat all the, you can eat all the <laughs> see, see I, I'll, I'll, I'll order you some lemons and tomatoes. How about that? You can OK, the, good. That'll balance it out. <laughs> no, this is great. Thank you. Excellent. I'll eat all the mangoes. <laughs> all right, so the next thing I'm actually going to do in terms of this formatting part is I'm going to show you how I made that table. Or not that table. I'm going to show you how, to, how I made that chart that I just deleted. Now you'll know that you'll know I'm about to show you something because I'm, I'm going to delete it first <laughs> and then I'll show you how to do it. So I have this table full of data right here. And from this table, I'm going to go ahead and create a new chart. So what I'm going to do is hit insert. And from insert, we have a whole bunch of charts here. OK, now the way I like to very easily do this is by selecting the data first. Once again, 
Excel's smart like that. If you select the data that, you, that you're gonna use first, and then you go to create a chart, it's gonna figure out what you're trying to do. So for instance, I just wanna see how much fruit I have by type in a bar chart. So I'll go ahead and select all these, and then I'll see my different options. How about these column or bar charts? I'll go ahead and hit the drop down right here. And I have plenty of them. So I have, and as I, as I hover over them, you'll start seeing some examples. That's exactly what it's showing me right now. So I got all my examples showing up. Do I want something 3D? Do I want bars? Do I want columns? There's all different options. I think I'll just go ahead and select this one right here. And if you notice, it's already taking the, the information from the chart or from the table and creating a chart from it. It's also indicating what information is being used where. If you select it, then you'll know that it's taking the amount from here. It's taking the uh, the um, the amount of fruit of each kind from right here, the actual amount. It's taking the title from here, and it's taking the um, the types from here. Now, all you have to do if you want to edit any of this is just go ahead and select it. I can edit it manually if I wanted to. Um, it may be taking its info from here, but if I go in here and change lemons, let's, oh wait, not lemons. Um, if I go in here and I take a look at the different labels, the numbers, I can really go in here and edit everything if I wanted to. And then also, I have the I have the capability, and this is one of my favorite things to do. I have the capability of going in here and selecting chart styles. So maybe this maybe I want a bar chart, but this isn't exactly what I want. That's okay. I'll go ahead and click chart styles here, and I can look through a whole bunch more different styles of charts. Maybe I like this one. Actually, I do like that one. Uh, maybe I like certain colors, so I can maybe change the the theme, the color theme of my chart, just like this. So even after you've started creating that chart, you can go in there and keep editing that style of that chart, just like this. So here we go, this is this is my chart. Actually, maybe I want, yeah, I think I'm good with that. All right, so I have, I have my, my chart right here. I got my fruit right here. It's indicating there, maybe you want this chart Maybe you don't want this table alongside the chart. That's OK, because with a workbook. There's multiple sheets. We've only been working on one, but we actually have the capability of working on multiple and they're all part of the same file. So this Excel document currently has three sheets. Um, I like to have maybe uh, my data that I'm using in this chart, maybe on a separate sheet. So what I'll do is I will go ahead and take this chart. I will cut the chart, control X, and I will control V, paste that chart. And it's still taking that data directly from uh, the first sheet. So the, the sheets can still refer to each other. I want you to point, I want you to make sure that you know that as well, that the sheets can refer to each other. So even if, um, even if the, uh, the, the chart is on a separate sheet, then the data that it's referring to, it still, it insists on itself. So it knows that that data is over here. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on from here. All right, so um, here's our, so like I said, here's our chart. It's still pulling from over here. And the next thing I want to talk about is uh, another thing that I actually have already set up inside of this particular document that I'm going to show you how I did. Now you see these particular, uh, you see these fruit and you see the amounts of fruit. However, if you've ever worked at a grocery store, you know that you could potentially either have fruit or not have fruit. You could potentially have a tomato or not have a tomato. However, you can't have a negative tomato. And this is what I have set up. See, what I wanted to do, especially considering the fact that when you're working with 
office documents, you can share them with others so that you can work on the same document or they can view it. But in the case where you want to, to have them work on that document alongside you, you want to make sure that they um, are providing the right kind of information to that document. So in this particular case, what I have done is I have set up data validation for this cell. What is data validation? That is where you can set up rules for what kind of information can be in that cell. So I'm going to show you how I did this. And if you notice, it's telling me this value does not match the data validation restrictions defined for this cell. You can retry it. It's not going to work. You can retry it, but it's not. It's it's uh, it's looking only for positive whole numbers. And the reason why is because one, we don't sell half fruit, except for, I guess, watermelon. Um, but we also can't have negative fruit. There's no, there, you can't have uh, a deficit of fruit <laughs> where th that, that would be fruit that is now taking up negative space. So, um, so here we are with our data and I'm going to show you how to create validation for that data. So I'll select all this data right here and I'm going to show you exactly how I decided or how I was able to set that rule that we can only use those particular kinds of information. You go to data up here. So the data section and then from there you want to go to and it's a small little icon in, in the bottom right here and right here uh, or on the right or on the right over in this area it's called data validation and this actually brings up another particular point there's there's tools all over excel um we know it you know it we all know that there's tools everywhere in excel if you ever are looking for a specific tool you can actually use the search to find those tools so if, say for for instance that i might have forgotten where data validation is i can just type it in right here there it is there's data validation if I want to go and find my logic functions, then I can go ahead and type in logic and I'll find my logical functions complete with the drop down menu of what they are. But I'll go ahead and jump in here one more time. I know that we don't have as much time as we would want, and I want to make sure that we also at least get the um, the functions and formulas in there too. So let's go ahead and do this data validation real quick. So you click on data validation after selecting the cells that you want to have that validation. And this is what it looks like. This is the criteria that I had selected. So I selected these cells and I said allow, and then there's a whole bunch of options for what we allow, right? Um, and you can say allow any value, only whole numbers, decimals, list, date, time, text length, custom. Then you can select to ignore this rule if it's blank. Then you can say that the data has to be greater than or equal to, or as you see, a whole bunch of different other options. I had greater than or equal to because I want it to be at least zero. It cannot be a negative number, so it has to be a whole negative number. We do not sell fractions of an apple. So because of that, we want to make sure it's a whole number. So uh, with that, then I go ahead and hit OK if I'm satisfied. Also, you have the option to customize that message that shows up. Um, so when a cell is selected, show this input message. Um, so if there is, so maybe like, enter a whole positive number and then you can say error alert and then if you notice there's a whole bunch of if there's any kind of um, invalid data you can decide that there's that there's that 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 error alert that you saw earlier um, and you can actually customize it so you can decide to say I told you <laughs> to use a positive whole, and I'm actually going to capitalize positive whole number exclamation point, and I'll hit OK. 
So now when I go in here and I try to not follow the rules and type in negative seven for lemons, I told you to use a positive whole number. See, there we go. So this is how you can set data validation. And the very last thing that we're gonna do uh, before, we, before we close out, because I know that we're almost out of time here, the very last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to utilize functions and formulas. Now, I'm gonna show you something very quickly. You see these numbers down here, total fruit, and average fruit? Well, I didn't type these numbers in. I didn't go over here and look at all these numbers and then tally them up, you know, count my fingers or pull up the, you know, pull up the, the Microsoft calculator or write it down somewhere and figure out the, the sum. Instead, I used a function. Now, what function did I use? I used the sum function. And if you see, it may say 113 here, but if you look up here, this is what actually is on that cell. This is what Excel sees, and then based on this formula that I've created, it gives me this answer on that cell. So uh, I'm going to show you exactly how I did this first by deleting it. So we're going to delete it, and I'll do it from scratch. Now what I want to do here is I want to find the sum of all the fruit that is in this table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that whole section, yes, including the amount right here, and you'll see why I'm doing that. Or, or when I or when I do this, I'm going to I'm going to even include the amount. Now, if I go in here and hit, if I select this cell, which is where I want this particular uh, sum to be, I will hit equals. Okay, so I'm hitting equals. Equals, whenever you use equals first inside of a cell, it knows that it's looking for a formula. So as part of this, now we're going to go to the formula section. And you'll find one of the easiest ways is to select auto sum here and hit sum. This is one of those very easy mathematical equations. Hit, hit auto sum and then. Oh, sorry. One second. So we'll go ahead and select this. We're going to hit sum in this section here. And then from there, then it asks us, what are we finding the sum of? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this, including amount. And the reason why I'm selecting including amount is so that it understands not just these cells inside of the table, but this section of the table, this particular uh, column of the table. So even if the table, add, say for instance, we decide that we want to add on, I don't know, uh, figs to this table, then it will also include that as part of this uh, total amount. So if you see, when I selected this as what I want to find the sum of, it says table one, all amount. And I can keep actually adding other values. I can select other values from even other areas on this particular uh, on this particular sheet. I can go to other sheets and find even uh, even more values if I wanted to, and combine them together to find the sum. And when I hit OK, oh, there's one issue. There's a problem with the formula. All right, and if there's an issue there then we go ahead and we fix it. So let's go ahead and select one more time. And we will edit it one more time. Equals the sum. So I'll go ahead and equals sum. Select entire area. Table one, amount. Pardon me, yes, you are not supposed to select amount. I'm sorry about that. So table one, amount. It knows that this area, even if I add more entries to this table, we're back to 113, that's the total. If I change any of these numbers, lemons, I'm adding five lemons, it's now 118. The average is using the average cell reference to also 
give us an average of all these fruit. So that's why this number changed too. Or it's using the average function the same way that I just used the sum function. You can use the average function and find the average. But I know that we did just hit three o'clock. Are there any final uh, questions that we have before we have to close out? Unfortunately, we're all out of time, uh, but are there any final questions that we can answer? The only thing I was just going to draw, draw somebody's attention to is somebody asked if there was a spell check in Excel, which I know Excel is a little bit different than some of our other platforms. But if you go under the review tab, you can see there is the option for uh, checking your spelling. It doesn't appear like it does in Word and other platforms. You have to kind of navigate to it since this is primarily data based. Uh, the other questions are very personalized, so I think that's more of a, a me to follow up one on one with some of their uh, specific spreadsheet sure. um, questions. But Neil, this was incredibly helpful and we have a large request for the next level of Excel so that they can put into practice some of the things that you were able to demo today. So thank you so much for being willing to, to train us at UT Dallas and share some of these techniques so that we can enhance our um, Excel usage. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, UT Dallas. Um, and I definitely uh, will let the team know that you are interested in learning even more about Excel going forward. Um, once again, I have been Neil, <laughs> uh, right down here in Midtown Dallas, so uh, not too far away from y'all, but y'all enjoy yourself, enjoy the rest of the week as we continue on, um, and I hope to see you again on the next one. All right, thank y'all for attending.